Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Down and Dirty at 1.30 Central Time. Uh, this is Vishon Boric from Team Tough, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you took time to watch our Down and Dirty. I call it the Down and Dirty because I try to give you only the materials that you really need to be successful. I try to remove as much fluff as I can and to help you to be successful in your online business and in your life. Uh, so if that sounds like something that you're interested in learning how to do, then stick with me because today we're going to be discussing video hacks. So if you saw that, and I've got a bunch of notes on my screen, so if my eyes are darting around, it's not because I'm trying not to make eye contact, uh, but it's because I really think that video is one of the most important things uh, in order to get people to really know you especially if you're in an online business. And the reason for this is, you know, when people are in an online business, typically you don't get to meet face to face with your customers. And video is one of the few ways or methods that you can actually do that. And I have gotten to the point where I absolutely love video. I must love it or I wouldn't be doing these hangouts because obviously I'm putting my, my face out there. But I will tell you that with video, when I first started doing videos, it was so challenging. It was, it was so hard. I remember just trying to shoot one video, just kind of introducing myself, and it must have taken it must have taken me like sixty takes or more before I was satisfied with the video. How many of you have had that experience? Oh, I'm sure you have. Uh, so if if you've ever done video for the first time, it can be a little nerve wracking. But I've learned something, and that the more you do it, the easier it gets. And I've also learned quite a few tricks over the past few years as to how to make more professional videos and, you know, more importantly, how to get them seen. So today I'm going to be talking to you about some great tips. And the title of today's Hangout is called Video Hacks to Broadcast Your Business Like a Pro. So in broadcasting your business like a pro, there, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. Number one, the whole purpose of your video is to get people to know, like, and trust you. Anything else that you say, do, share on your video is nothing unless you are speaking from the heart and sharing in a way that people will know, like, and trust you. So you have to look at video as just as if you're talking to a single person face to face. And when you start looking at it that way, it becomes so much easier to shoot really good video. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. I don't want you guys to say, oh, wow, you know, she must be a videographer, an expert. Far from it. I had absolutely zero previous experience with doing video. And you may think that that's not true, but believe me, I had no, no experience with video. I had lots of experience with graphic design, but none with video. So everything that I'm sharing with you today are things that I have learned, educated myself on, and you know, I've seen what works and, and what doesn't work too. So I'm going to start off with some very basics. Again, got a lot of notes here, but just some tips on shooting your video. So let's start there. These are tips to shoot the perfect video without being professional. So one of the biggest things that a lot of people think is that, oh, you must, you have to have this fancy camera or, you know, you, you must have a, a studio or something like that in order to be successful with video. Well, that is not it at all. In fact, I want to show you my video camera. Are you ready? There it is. <laughs> My video camera is an iPhone. I use this more than anything. Now, I did recently, uh, for Christmas actually, I got a GoPro camera, and I've been using that more and more. And GoPro cameras cost, you know, maybe about 400 and some dollars, depending on the model you get. Uh, so that's the fanciest camera I have. But this, and this is, an, this is not even the newest iPhone. Phone. For those of you that love your iPhones or if you have one, you know that this is, you know, last year's model. This is, a, a, what is it, the iPhone 5C, I believe. And I've had it for a little while. My contract's not up, but when it is, I will be upgrading to the next iPhone because I do really enjoy these products and I think they're so simple to use. And the video quality is actually quite good. So I use this for 99% of all my videos, 99%, and only about 1% I'm doing with the GoPro. So, you know, once you have your, your video camera in hand, and it doesn't have to be an iPhone either, for those of you that like your, you know, your Android devices, I don't want you to, to feel left out. There are some incredible cameras, probably even better in some cases than the iPhone uh, for shooting video. 
and that's why I love it. It's convenient. You have it with you, and the sound quality is usually pretty good. So um, that's that's what I'm using. Now, the second thing that I encourage you to do, and this is this is really important, is that if you do not have a video camera, don't feel like you can't you know shoot a video because most computers these days have you know, a, a camera built into it. In fact, the, the, what you're seeing right now, obviously I'm not on my iPhone because I just held it up. What you're seeing right now is my computer, my webcam that's built into my laptop that's actually shooting this Hangout. And it does a pretty good job. Uh, it does do it in HD, which is nice, and that's the high definition. So, you know, test it out. If you don't have a, a phone that has good quality video, maybe you don't even have a smartphone yet, um, then I would recommend testing your own computer. And I'm going to show you kind of how you can use that to produce videos in case you don't have your iPhone handy. Okay, the other thing that's important is lighting. Lighting is absolutely key. If you want to have a professional, quality-looking video, then you need good light. Now, what I do is I actually have a lamp without a lampshade sitting right next to me. That's how come my face is lit up right now. So I don't even have official you know, professional lighting system here. I just have a lamp. It has a regular light bulb in it. I think it's the low wattage kind, actually. And I just have it without the lampshade sitting right here on my desk. And I only turn that on when I'm doing video just to, you know, brighten my face so I don't look so dark. If you do that and you want to have this light, what it does is it actually, you know, takes the shadows away from your face, which shadows have been known to create feelings of distrust. So you don't want to have a lot of shadows and darkness and you know graininess. That's the other thing. If you don't have enough light, then your video is going to have kind of a grainy look, like it's you know not very clear. So lighting is key. And I know it may seem like it's going to blind you, but you want as much light as you can take uh, because the video quality typically darkens when it shoots the video. Okay. The easiest way to get really good light, especially for skin tone and stuff is to shoot your videos outside. So what a concept, right? So if it's a nice day and you've got some good light, even if it's cloudy, just natural light is going to give you the best look on your face. Uh, it's gonna be the most natural and, and it's going to make your video look a little more professional. So lighting is number key, is number one in the key. All right, the other thing is to look the camera in the eye. And obviously I'm looking around because I'm looking at notes. But when you're shooting a video, like say for a bridge page, and for those of you that don't know what that is, um, this is something that we teach you when you do online marketing, and it's actually a video page that helps to drive sales. If you're interested in learning more about what that is, get in contact with me, and you can click on any of the buttons below, and that'll get you in contact with me, and we can teach you all about setting up a sales funnel online. So, but if you're shooting a professional video, like a bridge page, you want to make sure that you're you're making good eye contact with the camera. And the way to do that is to look the camera right in the eye. You have to imagine in your mind's eye when you're speaking uh, to your phone or, or to your computer screen, you're not looking at the screen of your phone or computer. You're looking right in the eye. Can you tell I'm looking right in your eye? <laughs> look right in the camera eye as you speak. And what that does is it, it makes the illusion of you making eye contact with your audience. And that is so important because when you speak to somebody in person, you want to make good eye contact because it's that eye contact that develops that know, like, and trust that we spoke of at the beginning of this hangout. Uh, I also recommend having that, the camera eye, at eye level. I've seen some people, like if I'm using my phone here, I've seen them hold them up high and try to shoot up like that. But then it kind of looks like, you know, you're talking to somebody really tall. And, you know, if you hold it down and you talk into it, uh, you know, then it, then it appears like you're, you're condescending, that you're talking down on somebody. So try to hold your camera at eye level and you'll find that people connect with you more. They're going to connect with your video a lot more and you'll have a much better response. All right. Okay. So the other thing that's helpful is when you're shooting a video that you want to look professional, we use what's called the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds, and I'm not doing a very good job of it with this hangout, but the rule of thirds is imagine that the screen is split into three segments. So one segment is here, 
and then move my fingers backwards on the screen for me. Then you've got another line here, and then the, the you know, third segment is over here. So imagine that there are three segments on your screen. You want to position your head, your face, in one of the lines in the third. So if I were to do that properly here, let's see, I would do it right about here, I guess. So I'd be about at the rule of thirds here. Let me turn a little bit more. There we go. So now I am at the rule of thirds. It's a little awkward for a hangout to do this uh, because I have to turn my computer screen. But I can tell you it really does help because it, it makes your, your video look a little more cinematic and a little more interesting because now they're seeing the background and you're seeing my stack of papers now. So I'm going to turn that back. <laughs> uh, so you want to make sure that you know you have a good background too. So that's another one. So not only using the rule of thirds when you're filming, but to have a nice background. Now, I will tell you a little secret, but don't tell anyone. My whole office is not tidy. I, I do have a, a tendency to be a stacker when I have projects going on. So what I try to do is when I'm going to film or do a hangout, I actually clean up the background so that it looks neat and tidy. Now, some of you may be neat freaks and your room may just be spotless. Then you don't have anything to worry about. Uh, for me, I'm a little more of a stacker, so I need to, you know, clean up my background so that it looks really clean. Now, don't tell anybody that secret because I kind of like to keep that hidden. Um, but anyhow, so this is something to keep in mind. Your background, when you shoot video, really speaks volumes to your audience because not only looking at you, they're looking at, you know, what what it is that that you enjoy, what you're like, you know, who are you, and a lot of that is expressed in the environment that you're sitting in. Uh, when you're outside, I've been told that some of the best backgrounds that you can have are that of what's called a hypnotic background. And those are things that have water in them. Like if you can stand with, you know, like a, a lake or a pond or a river or something like that, or even a swimming pool in your background, it's it's going to, you know, give kind of a, a, a nice feel to your video. It keeps people mesmerized. It's kind of like, um, I don't know how many of you have sat around a bonfire. When you sit around a bonfire, you kind of get hypnotized by the flames. You know, they're, they're interesting because they make so many different shapes. Well, a, a fire would be a really good example of something to have in the background to kind of get people engaged. Because you'll find that when you're in an online environment, the attention span is much, much less than when you're not in an online environment. So you have to you have to have some tricks in the background to keep people engaged. So another way, if you don't have a really beautiful scenic background, is to do what's what's called uh, now I forget what it's called uh, a break in your actual video. So here's an example of a break. I'm going to take a drink of my Vita Coco water here. I'm not an advertiser for them, but I love it so. So what did that do? I just broke the, the train of action, the, the, my train of thought. I just broke your, uh, maybe you were getting bored by what I was talking about, just by taking a sip of a drink in the middle of talking to you. This is a way to re-engage your audience. And you can do anything. You can be completely silly. You can act like you dropped your pen and pick it up. And, or you can pause, or you can say, hang on just a minute, and you know, stand up and do something and then come back. By doing that, it actually breaks their frame of thought so that they can re-engage in whatever it is that you're speaking about. So that, that's another kind of hidden trick that, that I recommend if you want to be a professional when it comes to speaking on a video. All right, um, there's a lot of them, but I'm not going to go through all of them because I would be here literally all day. I'm going to go on to the next segment, and the next segment on my agenda today, let me pull up my list here, is three editing tools that make it easy to add a professional touch to your video. So when you're done shooting your video, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is upload it somewhere. Most of the time, YouTube is the best place to do it. Uh, YouTube is very popular, it's, it's easy to use, there's lots of tools that'll allow you to quickly upload a video. Uh, into YouTube, uh, if you have a, if you did it on your phone, for example, there are some applications, apps that you can use in order to upload that video right away. Um, however, uh, if you are one of those that is prolific with your videos, you may want to consider a more professional uh, video upload service like Wistia, and that's W-I-S-T-I-A. 
and Wistia is a place where you can upload videos and uh, you know you still own the rights to those videos so they aren't going to be shut down if YouTube decides they don't like what you're speaking about and that is kind of scary some of you um, you have to be really careful because if you are posting videos and you get into that salesy mode that we try to avoid remember from my, my previous hangouts it's never good to just try to sell 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 in your videos because what happens is people don't like that number one uh, and secondly you're gonna get flagged eventually you're gonna get flagged by YouTube because they don't they don't like that type of stuff and once you get if you get flagged too many times YouTube has the right to shut down your entire account now when that happens you don't get your videos back they're gone so you want to make sure that you have backups of any videos that you upload into YouTube so just keep that in mind and you know as long as you are shooting videos that are of value and they are giving good good service and you know you're not out there trying to you know spam people with content that's you know very advertising like and salesy then you're probably not going to get shut down because YouTube likes channels they like videos that are you know entertaining or of value and so I just want, wanted to forewarn you that these are just some things that I've learned and I hope that that helps you as you're on your quest to produce these great videos all right so what are the the tools that I use most often well, I'm gonna flip around and I'm gonna show you a few of them here um, so just give me a second here All right. Okay, so right now you should be able to see my screen, or it should be popping up here momentarily. And yeah, you know, one of the easiest tools to use is actually YouTube itself. So you can upload your video right off of your phone, or if you used uh, you know your your own computer, your laptop, in order to record the video, then it'll already be in here. Uh, especially if you use Google Hangouts. So let me let me kind of back up and show you some secrets that you may not know about how to use YouTube in order to manage your videos. So the first thing that that I do anytime that if I host a hangout like this or if I was somebody that wanted to use my laptop to record the video, I would probably record it just like I was doing a hangout because it's very quick it instantly goes into YouTube and then you don't have all of that extra time of having to upload into YouTube. So here's how you do that. You would come into YouTube, you would click on the upload button that's in the upper right hand corner. See how long it takes when I've got a hangout going sometimes it really slows my computer down. Okay and once you come into the upload screen you'll see in the right rail the third one from the bottom or the from the top down is Google plus hangouts on air when you click on that and I'm not gonna click on it now because it'll probably kill this broadcast but when you click on that it's going to allow you to create a Google hangout and really you don't have to share the hangout with anyone you can make it uh, unlisted you can make it private uh, so you have that capability and instantly when you're done recording it's going to automatically have that available to you within your YouTube account so it's like an instant video recorder and that's that's what I love about it and you can still edit it you know after you've posted your Google Hangout uh, you can still go back and edit that video so if I were to do it today I would probably initially broadcast it as a private hangout and then once I was all done I would go in and edit that video and then I would switch it to make it public so here's where you know when you upload a video you can make it public unlisted private or scheduled um, I've never actually used the scheduled so that's new but um, if you make it unlisted anyone can see it as long as they have the link if it's private nobody can see it except you okay all right so that that's how I would do that now how do you edit the, the video itself the way that you can edit it and this is a really cool tool that YouTube has is if you go up underneath your your picture or icon for your YouTube account you click on that you will see right underneath your name it says creator studio so if I click on creator studio I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then once I'm in the creator studio I'm gonna click on create
And under create, there you can choose, you know, audio if you wanted to have uh, you know, music in the background, or you can just go straight here to the video editor, which is usually what I do. Okay, so now I'm in the video editor, and from here, the video, like the Hangout that I recorded, I can search for it, and I simply, if I wanted to edit this snow day video that I shot, I would just drag it down here. It's probably going to start playing. Okay, uh, I would drag it down here, and I could go back in and add some additional uh, videos to this. So, uh, let's see, I think I closed that. Yeah, so you close that, and then you can add other videos to it. So, and you can also add a closed caption. You could add photos to it if you wanted to splice some photos into your video. Um, music, I think we spoke of. Uh, you can even add transitions, and transitions would be if you go from one video to another, uh, you can allow it to kind of fade into the next video or slide in or however you want to have it do that. Um, you can also add text to your video, which is really cool. Um, like, let's just add some text to this one, shall we? All right, so let's try, let's see, center title. We'll have it slide in. So here I could add in my own text. So maybe I want to put my own, um, right here, I could put my link to my capture page. So when I come in here, let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. It slides right in with toughmama.com. So you can do all kinds of things. You can even change the color of the text, um, all kinds of things, change the font. So, and once you're all done, you want to make sure you give your video another name, give it a name that, you know, has some good keywords, and then click create video. And now, all of a sudden, you have a professionally edited and completed video all done in YouTube. You didn't even have to, you know, get some fancy editor to do it for you. So really, really slick. Right, so that, that's one tool that I wanted to share with you. The other tool I wanted to share with you is, um, actually it's another tool that would be on your computer, not on your phone, and that is if you're on a Mac, then they have a tool called iMovie, and perhaps you've heard of it. I'll just pull that open really quick here. I am not on a Mac. I love Macs, but I, I'm just not on one today. Um, but yeah, if you, if you go to iMovie, if it has it in here let's see I don't know today if that's a paid app um, for your Mac or if um, you know if it's free if it's included when you buy it some of you that have a, a newer Mac you can you know let us know in the comments below if you want but this is a really great tool for editing videos and it's really slick they've got lots of templates and things to make your video look really professional so you know that's something that you know I would recommend taking a look at if you have a Mac if you don't have a Mac then uh, the PC version is called movie maker I'll just go here really quick so you can kind of see what it looks like all right, it's called Windows Movie Maker, and it's really, it, um, I have Windows Movie Maker on this machine, and it seems to be just as good as the iMovie. I, I've, there's all kind of templates in there. It allows me to do all sorts of editing that, uh, you know, that you would get from a professional uh, editing software, and it was very simple for me to figure out. So those are just two apps that you can use to edit your video. Um, a couple of things that I recommend when you're editing your video, Make sure that you know you edit the start and the end of your video, especially if you're doing it as a selfie. You don't want um, you don't want to actually show on the video you turning off the the video, or you know having your hand come up there. It just it kind of takes away from the professionalism of the movie or of your video. So you want to you know kind of splice or cut that part out. And it's very easy to do, even in the YouTube editor, to cut a portion of your video out so that it just runs smoothly. The same thing at the front end of your video. You don't want it to, you know, kind of be some hesitation there before you start. So make sure that you do those things and it'll really add to the professionalism. And the other thing that I'll recommend is when you are shooting videos that you're planning to use uh, to promote your company, I would always include a link in your video let me go over here even this one let me go back to the actual channel
come down here and this is one I made yesterday because I'm kind of snowed in here on this video I'm gonna turn the sound off but you'll see as it goes um, it's gonna pop up up here or it should shortly <laughs> Uh, maybe I lied. Um, I had my uh, my icon in there as far as uh, my team tough, but now I'm not seeing it for some reason. So maybe I didn't save it. But you should have you know your a web address or something like that built into your videos because what that's going to do is it's going to prevent somebody else from taking your videos and using them for their own. And that's that's really important because as you get more and more popular with whatever it is that you know you're promoting, you don't want somebody else to you know take your video or you know use it as a part of their own splice in order to promote uh, you know a similar product or service. So in all my videos, and I'll go back and re-edit this one, I try to add my URL into it. Usually, I have it throughout the entire video. Uh, so that that's that's something else. All right, so let me talk about a few other tools that are really helpful, and these are apps that you can use. One, my favorite one, hands down, it's the easiest to use, and I just love it. I use it all the time. It's called Splice, and this is what it looks like. And this is an app. Um, I have an iPhone, so I think they also have an Android. Mm, maybe not. It looks like it is iPhone only, so iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. Uh, so, but I love this app. It's so easy to use. You can integrate music, you can splice together photos, all from your phone. So you can have a completely edited video all from your phone without ever having to open up your laptop, and you can upload it instantly into YouTube. So really, really great tool. I like that one a lot. Um, the other thing is, is iMovie, the one that we, we showed you earlier, they also have an app. Uh, so if, if you, even if you don't have, you know, an iPhone, what is it? Uh, if you don't have an iPad or you don't have a, an Apple computer, you can use iMovie. So, like, I, I use iMovie on my phone all the time, and uh, their app is, is just as good uh, as, if not better, than Splice. I'm able to, you know, add in. They even have a whole library of sounds, so I can add those in. Um, I, I like how fast that it uploads, too. Through iMovie, I'm able to upload into YouTube much quicker than I am with Splice for whatever reason. Um, the I, I believe that YouTube they also have another one. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here on my phone, and I'll tell you what it is. Give me a second here. Uh, okay, yeah, YouTube has one called Capture. Let me see if I can pull that up here. See if this is it. Mm, I don't think that's the same one, but it looks pretty good here. You might check some of these out. The one that I have, I think it's the YouTube capture. It might be this one down here. Yeah, this is it. That's the icon. So this is another really good one, and it, it works seamlessly with YouTube. Uh, and it's got some really great features and tools and uh, capabilities in order to edit your videos. So, you know, I, I've tried that one recently and I really liked how it works. And that's another app you might consider downloading. All right, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of detail on, on some things that you can use to edit your video after you've produced that great video. The next thing I wanted to chat with you about here are some magic tricks that you've probably never heard of that you can do in YouTube. All right, so this is kind of exciting. I, I want to show you some things here. So the first thing is I want to show you a video that I did a while ago. And the, the video, I did it specifically. I don't usually share my keywords, so um, if you're watching today, don't go out and, and steal my keywords, please, um, or make up, you know, look up your own. But the, the, the keywords that I use are remote job opportunities. And I wanted specifically to target that audience and so I, I went ahead and I produced a video. And if I go under videos, you'll see I am number one. These are ads up here. I am still number one under remote job opportunities. And I produced this back December 5th, 2014. So I wanted to show you just a, a couple tricks that you can do to really help. I can't guarantee that you'll end up 
on the very top page of you know whatever keywords that you selected but I can show you kind of what I did and you might have some luck with that because it definitely worked for me so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this video and I think I did a pretty nice job on this video with with trying to maintain the rule of thirds and I've got the sound off right now and I, I just used a notation tool um, within uh, within uh, Yahoo, Yahoo, within uh, YouTube, they all start with a Y, you have the capability to use an, an annotations. And annotations basically allows you to plug in uh, some different things in your video. And um, on this one, it should have another annotation that pops up here that gives you my... Um, uh, my actual web address and maybe that's towards the end but th the point is oh there it comes so it, it'll pull up your you know your web address you can add that in there and then I even was able to make this uh, a link okay so what I wanted to the reason I wanted to show this to you is because it has been on the front page so if I go back here the very first thing that I recommend to everybody when you're recording a video, especially if it's one that you're hoping to make sales from, what you want to do is make sure that the link to your sales page or capture page, if you're trying to capture emails, is right here at the very first sentence. Maybe even, you know, at the most, the second sentence. Because you'll see here, it cuts off a lot of the, the, the words that I wrote. If I click show more, it's going to show that I, I wrote even more about this particular thing. So you want to make sure that your link is at the top and that when you record your video, that it also says you actually verbalize where you would like them to go after they watch that video. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is in the actual content, the description of for your video, you want to include as many keywords as you can. Uh, but don't just drop them in there. Actually make sentences with them. And I found that in doing that, it actually is helping my SEO and, and to boost my videos to the top of the page. So that's that's another big tip. And then finally, the, the biggest tip that I can give you is when you publish a video, you have, there's two ways that people can view it. One is through this share link right here. And the other is at the very top through the main URL. Notice the difference. The share link has utu.be and the main URL has the actual word youtube.com you know, spelled out. This link is really valuable because it is used to search. Google and Google owns YouTube. And so Google wants to search YouTube videos. And so in order to help them because they mainly want to search things that are related to YouTube. They don't like it a lot when you start directing traffic off of YouTube. They would rather people stay within their YouTube platform because they have ads and things like that that they run. So what you do in order to kind of game the system to help get your, your video ranked is you come in here and you're going to copy that URL and you're actually going to paste that into the description. For me, I've been pasting it at the bottom in the description, and that seems to have been really working for me because now I'm actually pointing to something on YouTube. It just happens to be my own video again, but it's actually helping with the Google search so that they think that you know that my video um, is going to keep people on their YouTube channel. So that that's a really nice little trick to try uh, when you're posting your videos. Hopefully, that makes sense. Do not use this one. I have not had as much success. In copying the share link into the copy into the body copy of my description um, it, it works best if you use the very top one here okay I hope that helps all right the, the other thing that I wanted to show you that's a really cool YouTube trick and that is if you ever want to download a video you can come right in here to your I don't know why it's showing this other video here uh, let me just go back. Okay, here we go. Um, you can come right up here onto your video URL and right after the www dot, type the letters SS. S is in Sam twice. Okay, what this is going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and click and show you.
this is going to allow you to actually download that video to your computer. This is really cool. Okay, um, some of you are getting kind of excited about this, and it's free. It's a free tool, uh, so and it's still loading here. But what it'll allow me to do is download a video. It doesn't have to be my own; it can be anybody's. And then I could actually use that video. Um, you know, if you wanted to share a video with a friend of yours or something like that, and or maybe uh, they allowed you to borrow their video. I would download it and upload it into your own channel within YouTube. That way, you're getting the traffic, and you know you're you're able to drive you know drive people to your own website from that. So this is a really nice tool, and it's also a great way to save videos that maybe you've lost. Um, you know, maybe you uploaded it and then you accidentally deleted it off of your phone or wherever. You can come in and you can actually download your videos, and it gives you a number of ways to download it as far as uh, different sizes. Uh, so that's a really great tool. Again, all you got to do is type in SS after uh, the www dot in the main URL of your YouTube. So really, really cool tool. All right, so now we're going to get into a few a little more in-depth hacks that you can use. All right, so I'm going to pull up. I have a hack screen that I made here. Pull this here into the middle. So these are some YouTube magic tricks that you may not know about. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to embed my videos into lead pages or my blog or even my own web page. Um, if you're not familiar with lead pages, it's a really great tool that we use in internet marketing. And uh, again, if any of this stuff is just you can't believe that you never heard of this and you want to get more information, reach out to me. I'm, I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to train you or coach you. You'll see some links below this video if you're on if you're on my Hangout page. Click on that. Join Team Tough, and uh, I'll give you a call, and we'll work things out and make sure that you know we get you up and going with whatever your needs are for your business. Okay, so we've got lead pages, blog, or web page. If you want to embed your video, here's the cool thing. I want my video to automatically play, especially on my bridge page. So how on earth do you get it to automatically play? Well, you can actually edit the URL of your video, and you can make it so that it'll auto play. So let me just go back here to, to YouTube. Okay, and here's my snow day video again. So I'm going to come back here. In fact, well, I'll do that next. Um, I'm back here on my snow day video. When you come into your videos, when you click on share, one of the options is right here. It says embed. So I click on that. That's going to give me the embed code. This is what you would actually use to paste your, your video onto your web page or onto lead pages. Now, if you are using our blogging software, all it takes is the URL link, and you can paste it in. Um, you can still, I'll show you something, but you, you can still modify it through there. But primarily, I use the embed link on like my web page and definitely on, and lead pages. So here's the cool thing. If you look at this code, okay, you kind of have to kind of dissect it. But you'll see this little code right here, right before the question mark, this is the ID for this specific video, all right? So if I wanted this video to... Uh, to be able to autoplay. When I paste this entire script into my HTML page, I'm going to actually edit this part right here. Okay, so I would delete that, and then all I would have to do after that little question mark is type in the word autoplay equals one. Okay, really cool. So what this will do now is when I paste this whole script into my web page, this video is automatically going to start playing. They don't even have to hit the play button. That's perfect. That's what we'd like it to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few more of these little codes that you can put in there. And I could do the same thing up here, I believe. So um, I would have to remove that and sign and then type in autoplay. Let's just try it, see what happens. So if I go right here and I copy the little question mark autoplay equals one. I'm going to drop it in up here. Let's see what happens. I think it auto plays anyway, but 
yeah, it started playing right away. So that's a really cool little way to get your video to automatically play. All right, so let me show you some other magic tricks. Uh, so sometimes you may want to hide the controls at the bottom. And by the controls at the bottom, I'm referring to these things down here. All these different settings, full screen, all that. If you want to hide those things, you can do that. And here's how you do it. You're going to use this little code, controls equals zero. All right, so what you do in order to do that one is you would come down into the embed link, or you could even do it up here. And you do have to have that question mark there after the YouTube ID. You want to make sure you don't delete that. And then you could put in controls equal zero. Okay, so now those controls down here won't show. Now, there are instances in which you may not want to show those, so that's that's why I'm showing you that. Um, you may want to have it autoplay and not have the controls show. If that's the case, and I'm going to show you that hack, it's actually down here a little further, um, all you got to do is put this little uh, ampersand, the word AMP, and then a semicolon between each command. So I'm going to go through a few of these, and I'll give you an exact example and explain how that works. But uh, here's a few others that you might want to have. Maybe you want your video to loop. Um, when a loop means that instead of it showing, uh, you know, other videos at the end, like I don't know if you saw earlier, after we came to the end of my snow day video, it started to show other videos, like these here that say up next. If I have this on my own personal page, I don't want it to advertise other people's videos. I only want it to show my video. So how do you prevent that? Well, that's where that hack comes in, where you actually can loop your video. You can have it automatically just replay your video over and over again until they you know, hit stop. Um, so that's one way you can do it. And again, that's this loop equals one. The other thing you can do is you can have it go to another video in your own playlist. So this is a really awesome way to, to keep them on your page. And what you would do there is after the question mark in your ID for YouTube, you're going to plug in playlist equals and then whatever the YouTube ID is for the video you want them to go to. In fact, you can even have them go back to the same video that you just started with. So it would basically stop at the very beginning of the video that you just played. And so here's what it would look like. Like the one with the snow day, this is the, the ID for it right here. So I would plug in playlist equals this. Let's just plug that in so you can kind of see. So I'm going to copy that. I'd come down here into the embed code. And then after the question mark, and in between the little uh, carrot, I'm going to plug in playlist equals, and then it's going to go right back to the same video. Really cool stuff. So you can actually combine all of this together, and that's what I wanted to show you next. So in, in my hack, I actually have an example here, and that is this sample does a lot of cool things. So after the question mark, and this is my snow day video, I have video ID, so it's basically telling it uh, to use a specific uh, full screen version, uh, version four of the video, and um, I don't know what the REL is, I got this from another site, but then between each of these, notice I have the and, amp, and then a semicolon, that's allowing me to add additional tasks to my video. Um, it's going to show the info, and then the controls are gone. It's going to autoplay. It's going to loop. And then it's going to only go back to the video. So I actually did this to one of my videos to, to see what it would look like. So let me show you. And I'm going to take you to my actual bridge page. And if you want to write it down and take a look at it, it's video.toughmama.com. So you can see here, it doesn't have any of the controls. It has YouTube here, but none of the controls are here, so I can't shut it off. I can click on it and pause it, which is good. You still want people to be able to pause it, like if they're at work or something. And when it comes to the very end of the video, it's going to go back to the beginning of this video and replay. So it encourages the person that's here uh, you know, to not 
start looking at other YouTube videos because we don't want them to do that. We want them to go on and click the next button and go to the next page. So this is a really great way to kind of hack your video so that it looks more professional and uh, it, you know, it also prevents people from skipping out on your video and going to some other site. So really, really nice. Um, I think I've covered all of the hacks I wrote down. There are so many hacks. If you are looking for different things you can do in YouTube, I definitely recommend going and doing a Google search for uh, you know, YouTube hacks. And you'll find that there are a lot of different things you can do uh, that aren't typically advertised on YouTube uh, that you can really use to your advantage to make your videos even better. So I think I've covered everything. I'm let me check my, my list again. Let me flip it back over to me so you can see me again. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like on my list I have covered everything. If you have any questions, uh, if I went too fast, you can always rewind this. This will be recorded. Uh, and if there's other things or tips that you know about that I did not cover, feel free to comment in the box below and I'll try to answer your questions as soon as I can. And uh, as always, I really appreciate you being on our, our Monday Hangouts. We do these every Monday at 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern Time. And this is our Down and Dirty from Team Tough. Make it a great day and we'll see you next week for our next Hangout. Take care.